Good evening, everyone. I Good trust evening. I trust you had a wonderful day. That song reminds us that despite all that we are going through, Jesus is still Lord. Today is September 30th, the last day of the ninth month of the year. Tomorrow is October 1. Many of us are wondering and probably asking, where did the year go? <laughs> Some of us have not attended a regular church service since the end of February or early March. These are indeed challenging times. And for many, these are difficult times. As a church and as a body of believers, I think it is a wonderful opportunity when we can use the medium of technology and come together to give thanks and praise to a loving and caring God. I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone tuned in to what should be a service that brings blessing to all of us. The songs we sing, the prayers that will be offered, and the spoken word should lift our spirits and cause us to be drawn closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To one and all, I say welcome and please enjoy the service. Our opening hymn is number 268, and I will ask Jane to lead us in the singing of that song at this time, please. Hymn number 286. Before we sing the song, I would like just to give a little brief mention of the author. The song um, which mentions the blessing that we can find in God's word of light is wonderful words of light. The text was written and the tone was composed both by Philip Paul Bliss. He was born in 1838 and died in 1876. He was always interested in music. He was born with music in his soul and during his short life became one of America's greatest hymn writers and composers. Hymn number 286, Wonderful Words of Light. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of light. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life, words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life. Sing a list to the loving call, wonderful words of life. Also freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Oh, for pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctified forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, 
wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. I would like to say that words are always important, but the words of Jesus are packed with power. Let us pray. Our God and our Heavenly Father, we deem it a privilege to come together through this medium to worship and praise your holy name. Although we are separated in different homes, Lord, we are still together. And you have said in your word, wherever two or three are gathered together, touching anything in your name, you promised to be in the midst to bless. And so we are asking you to come into our midst, Lord. Bless every person tuned in. Bless the families that are represented. And grant, Lord, that we may receive rich blessings from your throne. Thank you for hearing and answer our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you all who have helped in leading this worship service this evening. And right now, uh, Sister Bridget Bastian will come with music just before Elder Harrison Moxie uh, lead us into the throne of grace this evening with a meditation. Would you like for me to do the scripture reading? Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, my eyes skipped over that. Go ahead, do the scripture and then the music and then the, yes. Today's, this evening's scripture reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 7 through to 10. And the word of the Lord says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, for his hope is in the Lord. And for he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, by the waters, which spread out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. Amen.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Here we are in the middle of the week on a very uh, fitting song encouraging us to press on. And for the next few moments, uh, we just want to touch on the Word of God and the topic for this evening as we go into the message. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to share on, on the introduction. Uh, how is it with your heart? How is it with your heart? Our meditation, so ably read by Elder Roger. Thank you for the reading from the book of Jeremiah uh, in chapter 17, 7 to 10. But before we go right into the scripture reading, I just want to take a few steps back uh, to help us understand uh, what our study is in these few chapters here at the book of Jeremiah. And to understand that sometimes uh, in life, I know we have preferences. Uh, we have um, anticipation of, of things or directions in which we would like to go or where we think things should go or how we think things should go. And not all the time that's the way it's going to go. And sometimes we think that that's the way God wants us to go. And in Jeremiah's case, God told him uh, point blank which direction he is going in. God is sovereign of all and the God of the universe. He chooses whom he will. He uses whom he will, he will. And whatever means he decides to accomplish, whatever he will, he will do so. And so sometimes God call on us fallible beings, his creation, to do his bidding. Sometimes it may seem like we don't have a choice. But sometimes neither do we give our children's choices uh, simply because we're their parents. Before they become of age, uh, a child will always, particularly a young child, uh, all the way into probably up to five years old from toddlerhood, um, they would always ask the question why whenever a parent or an adult will tell them something because they're always curious about why, why, why. Till eventually the adult may get tired of answering the question um, to the child and they'll say simply because I said so. If we move back to chapter 16 of the book of Jeremiah, if you turn in your Bibles with me, here's what you're going to discover. And beginning at verse 1, we're in the book of Jeremiah. God says something striking and alarming to Jeremiah. The word of the Lord also came to me, Jeremiah is saying, verse 2, he goes on, you shall not take a wife nor shall you have sons or daughters in this place. And so sometimes we seem, seem, like, uh, seem to us like the perfect um, situation is before us or the perfect mate is before us. And here comes a word from the Lord say, you should not take a wife in this place. My eldest son, Harrison, um, He's probably in his second week of marriage. Imagine a young man hearing, after having your eyes probably set on some, somebody whom you love, you shall not take a wife in this place. Mm -hmm. Nor have children uh, for consideration. His birthday is today, 20, 77, on the last day of September. And so everything seems to be going well. And I use him as an example. Um, Jeremiah may have been even younger than 27 at the time. He received the word, I'm not sure. And God knows why he does what he does, why he says what he says. And sometimes it's not enough to just read the Bible, talk about the word of God, and not being prepared to live it. There's a famous um, text that people use and we don't often apply it to ourselves. Sometimes we normally would give it to other people uh, when they're going through, uh, through certain circumstances. And the famous text is 
all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. I received a call yesterday. I was in conversation with a church member from another, of the Adventist faith, but from another church often calls me uh, to get my take on things and we discuss, bounce things off of each other. And this text was a part of the subject of our conversation. All things work together for good. And so we both are uh, in the same industry, you know, impacted by COVID. Um, but it doesn't bother me because I think at some point you need to have some spiritual maturity based on your relationship that you would have had with God, based on what you would have tried and seen and proven. Some may not understand it, but I don't think the Christian should be walking around fretting uh, every time something doesn't go your way. Uh, you seem to think like it's the end of the world or things not going to come through and we start to lose hope and faith. Sometimes when things are going even well, we start to uh, forget God. But look at the reason why God gave um, Jeremiah this declaration, uh, because God, being omniscient, knows all things. So here's the future for this place that God is talking about, which is Judah in Jerusalem. He says, for thus says the Lord in verse 3, concerning the sons and daughters who are born in this place, and concerning their mothers who bore them and their fathers who begot them in the land. They shall die a gruesome death. Gruesome deaths. They shall die. And they shall not lament or be lamented, nor shall they be buried. But they shall be like refuse of a place of the earth. They shall be consumed by the sword and by famine. And their corpse shall be meat for the birds of the heavens and for the beasts of the earth. So God knows what is coming. And often we're gonna see in Jeremiah, um, he quotes from the book of Proverbs and from the Psalmist uh, in some of the things that he's going to, uh, we're going to see as we move on. So God in his foreknowledge and his omniscience um, disclosed to Jeremiah what the future holds. Christ in Matthew chapter 24, even reference uh, woe unto those who are giving suck in the time of trouble that they have to flee and, and pray that your flight be neither in the winter or on the Sabbath day. And he was referencing the hardship that is coming for the believer. And it, but in this case of Jeremiah, uh, for those who have turned away from God, what is, what is actually going to happen to them? Uh, so, Sometimes when we see certain things, we have to believe Psalm 27, which ends with wait on the Lord. Amen. For we shall renew our strength. And the final words of it says, wait, I say, reiterating that which was said before, wait, I say on the Lord. So now as we move to chapter 17, um, we find that uh, something uh, is happening. Something is happening. We saw what happened in, in verse 2 uh, and, and onward in chapter 6. And sometimes we feel like God may be holding back uh, some things from us that we really want. You know, sometimes we think we deserve it, but God knows best. So he knows best. Uh, so something is coming and God is preparing us for it. We don't know what it is, but in trusting in God, we will wait and we will see. And in our waiting, uh, let's not get hasty or panic or be afraid. Um, quite frankly, I'm very impressed about the way God has, even though there, I don't, I don't um, downplay the hardship um, that riddles not just the Bahamas, but around the world, but many are kept. Many are kept. And um, if I was to disclose, you may probably think God only loves me one. But I am thankful for his safekeeping and for his provisions and um, for the way he leads his people. Now, whatever state you find yourself in, I think we learned this in the presentation um, from Dr. Hannah on the weekend. Learn to be content. 
That was the testimony of, of the Apostle Paul. So, let's go to verse uh, chapter 17. In the midst of the apostasy that's happening in Judea uh, with the people of God, God gives a warning and he speaks of the, the state that the people were in. I'll just try to pick up from verse five to gain context here. It says, thus said the Lord, curse is the man, this is chapter 17, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Who are you looking to for strength in your time of need? Whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched place in the wilderness, in the salt, in a salt land which is not inhabited. Now our scripture text says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like what? A tree planted by the waters. Waters signifying a fruitful place, a blessed place, uh, because it's in contrast to the parched, des deserted and dry land, uh, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when he comes, but its leaves will be green and not be drought. So even though things are going good and they're planted by the water, and things are going good and the leaves are green, but in the time of drought, which we can consider this global pandemic actually affecting the world now, a time of drought, God said he will, will not be anxious, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So you must always show that spiritual confidence that even in the midst of drought, which we can say that we are living in uh, now, uh, are we still Christians? Uh, are we still bragging, talking at the sheriff front? Uh, thank you for the message last week. We dealt with praising the Lord. And we ought to be able to praise God under any circumstances. Don't trust in your feelings. Uh, sometimes the hearts get pounding because of what is actually before us. Here's a little something about the heart. And this is the, the topic today. How is it with your heart? Verse nine says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's a quote uh, from the prophet Solomon. I, the Lord, he says, search the heart and test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways and according to his doings and according to his doings. So the faithful saints of God can trust in God because God knows the heart. Going back to chapter 16, this is what was proclaimed for the people for their idolatrous ways. Listen to this sobering message from the, from the Lord, going back to chapter 16 and verse five. For thus said the Lord, do not enter the house of mourning, nor go to lament or bemoan them. This is sobering. For I have taken away my place from this people, says the Lord, and his loving kindness and mercy. In the day of calamities, if we turn away from the Lord, then we turn to whom? There's only one other option. We turn to Satan. The strongest evidence of God, God's wrath we see in the Bible is against adultery. Which commandments is that? Idolatry. Hmm? That's the second commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images of any likeness of anything that's in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that's the waters under the earth. For 
I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. God will not share his worship with anyone. Amen. Uh, and we should not want to give it to anyone. But sometimes prosperity can cause us to forget God and we may not even realize when we are actually committing idolatry because we're just going on and just going on. So sometimes we need a wake up call. Now, Jeremiah being the message, the messenger of God, tried to take the word of God to the people. And something very, very sobering um, happens. Something very sobering happens. As we go to chapter 18, quickly. By the way, by the way, before I jump out of chapter 17, uh, there's something else to take note of here. There's something else to take note of here. Earlier in chapter 17, um, let's move back to verse one. I don't want to run too far ahead too quickly. Look at what is happening when Jeremiah takes the word of the Lord and the God, God describes the people, something happens. The sins of Judah, the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. With the point of a diamond, it is engraved on the tablets of their hearts and on the horns of your altars, while the children remember their altars and their wooden images. This pen of iron signifies uh, a permanent, a permanent uh, writing of their sins on their heart. Why? because they will not repent. They would not repent. So it is inscribed on their hearts, signifying the sins of Judah is indelibly written with an instrument used to inscribe for permanent record. This is sobering. God is merciful, God forgives. But here in Jeremiah, he used an instrument like when we go into general elections, they use in an indelible ink that's not easily washed off, that declare um, that this person has already voted, you can't come back in the same day. It has a mark upon it. So know that it is written on the tablets of their hearts and on the horns of their altars where they would have placed whatever it is before or above God. And it is as a constant reminder that their sins are not atoned for. Have mercy. So their sins are not atoned for and is written on the altar of their hearts so that they can always be reminded. This signifies their lack of repentance. So they are comfortable in the state in which they are living. And even though they have been warned, they refuse to give it up. As God calls out, to the house of Judah, they are in a very bad state and they don't want to change. God knows the hearts and he speaks directly to it. He gives warning, be not dismayed. It is not all bad news, people. It is not all bad news. In the midst of chapter 17, we find uh, from verse seven, he says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And he'll be like a tree planted by the water side, uh, whose roots um, would be able to hold, who, whose green leaves will protect them, yeah. and who will not be anxious in the time of, of, of drought. Now, moving to verse or uh, chapter 18, look at what happens in verse 11. Look at what happens in verse 11. Uh, you can read this in your, in your spare time, just from 16 onward. Uh, listen to it audibly. and It's very striking and it'll bring you back to earth. And so from verse 11 in chapter 18, it says, Now therefore speak to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster 
and devising a plan against you. If God says this to me, I would be terrified. This is the word of the Lord by Jeremiah saying to the children of Israel. He says, return now. So see, now, now is here where we see the mercies of God. He says, return now, everyone, from his evil ways and make your way or make your ways and your doings. Amend your ways and your doing. In other words, is what God is saying. Now notice in chapter 17 and in 16, we find that God has engraved with an iron rod on their heart signifying an indelible mark, a permanent mark. This same context is used for which God wrote the Ten Commandments on the tablets of stone and not on papers that were laid outside um, of the Ark of the, covenant, of the Covenant, signifying an eternal covenant between God and his people. Same reference and context ought to be used here. But you still come back to chapter 18 and you see in verse 11, uh, God is still giving a warning for them to turn away from their wicked ways. Watch the reply of the people. How is it with your heart today? God wants us to turn in our stony heart for a heart of flesh. This is the clear example of a stony heart. Verse 12. And they said, this is the people, that it is hopeless. So we will, oh my Lord. So we will walk according to our own plans, my Lord. And we will, everyone, do what? Obey the dictates of his evil heart. This is what Judah said to God. No wonder they went back in captivity so many times for their apostasy. But this love that God has for Judah is based on a promise. Not to this stiff-necked people, but from a promise to Abraham, to Jacob, all the way down to the Davidical line. God has reserved this tribe, Judah, for which is the coming, uh, which would be the promise of the coming Messiah, through the tribe of Judah. But they seem to be so far gone, but God is forever calling out. This is very sobering. This is very, very, very sobering. And so in verse 18, I think this will be our final verse here. Look what happens to the messenger of God. <laughs> this is why some folks don't want to be... Uh, Pastoring and things is hard, you know, because sometimes you're going to have to stand up. You're going to have to stand up. And when you stand up to give God's message, people, they can't reach God. They can only reach you. So even though you're doing the right thing and there's no wrong or right time to do the right thing, it must be done always. Listen to what's happening to Jeremiah, the servant of the Lord. This is the people response. They, then they said, come, let us devise a plan against whom? Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priests, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us attack him with the tongue and let us not give heed to any of his words. How is it with your heart today? Is God speaking to you through his messengers, through his word, like Jeremiah? Are we ignoring it? The time has come, church, for God's people in all their ways to repent and to get it right with God, for he is waiting for you. He is waiting for me. Like one singer uh, I like to hear, I uh, love to hear Charles Fogelbrooks sing, the Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Oh, won't you let him come in? This is my admonition for you today. As we meditate upon the word of God, let us not be stiff-necked like Judah of old, 
but let us pray like David in Psalm 51. And may our request be create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Moxie. That was really a sobering message. Great message. For the times that we are living in. Thank you very much. God has used you, and may he continue to bless you. Amen. Now, folks, um, following on that sobering message and that beautiful plea at the end, to be faithful to God, I am opening up the next minute or so, a few minutes, for somebody or somebody's. It's testimony time now. And I'm hoping that you have a good testimony. So please unmute your mics if, and give that testimony of how, despite these tough times that that text refers to from back in those days, and we see right now, despite all of that, you still have the testimony. Somebody, please. Let me begin, um, Doctor. You know, we have made uh, many, um, we have pos posited many prayers before the throne of God on behalf of individuals here um, in our prayer times, both in church and in other settings, uh, prayer meetings. And recently, uh, two um, prayers. We prayed for um, a nurse who was struggling in hospital, and she is recovered. And um, we've been praying for God's protection of others. And we have seen God answer our prayers. And many times, um, we... We, uh, we kind of fly over uh, these facts. The, the Bible says the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And when God's people pray, uh, believing and in faith, the Bible says that God will answer our prayers. And we need to, to register this, uh, that uh, prayer ministry, our members who we've invited to pray on, on several occasions, a young lady, um, Timonay, um, the Moxie and I visited in the hospital when she originally was not well before she had a surgery and all the rest of it was admitted again and had um, another surgery and she was able to come through successfully with that and, and um, whatever her parents have asked us to pray for we have done it uh, and the Lord has answered uh, over the last three or so months uh, along with others and so I just want to give God thanks for a, a group of people who uh, when we ask for prayer and specific prayers that God has answered them and we want to thank him for that and praise him uh, because he says if you you come to me uh, believing and in accordance with my word that, that I will you will hear from me and, and, and he will answer us. And we need to affirm our appreciation to God uh, and, and for the faith uh, of the faithful um, in exercising that faith that this evening. Thank you so much, Pastor. I really want to endorse that and to say we should really be committed in our prayers. Continue. No time to cease praying now. Any other person, um, while you're thinking of it, I want to also say, Pastor, that, you know, like yesterday, I'm still in my office actually here. I'm the only one in the building, <laughs> but it is so beautiful and sacred. Um, but, you know, last night or around this time or later, I was just trying to get home and one of my colleagues called me, an Adventist doctor, goes to another church not too far from us and um, says her mom had COVID 
and gave it to his, her and then the, her, her other daughter has it now. I won't call the names, a well-known family. And, um, you know, it's the daughter, the, one of the daughters is doing well, the doctor daughter, and the other daughter is really having a struggling time in the hospital. And, um, you know, I was able to pray with them and talk with them. She, well, she couldn't talk with the daughter, but, you know, I, I, this morning again and today, the, 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 the daughter was the doctor and I just talked a while ago and the other daughter is still hanging in there, still doing um, the same like yesterday or a little better, I would think, you know, but everybody wants to be conservative. But um, we have to give God thanks for that which he's doing. So I ask without calling names, trust me, you know the persons, you know the family well, I'm just not calling any names. Just because you know the family so well, lift them up in prayers, please. Because, you know, it's, this thing is really a challenge. Any other testimonies? Good night, church family. I am here in Harbor Island and my testimony tonight is, although we are still quarantined, I'm able through social media to spread the word of the Lord by uh, mm -hmm. telegram. And I have had some people bought uh, Pastor Scavala's prayer book and we we're able to study through a link from the prayer books. So to God be the glory great things he has done and he's still doing through me in quarantine and when I'm out it'll be more amen amen that's the testimony that we needed <laughs> lovely thank you for sharing that come on folks we have to testify this is a time to really give God the glory I have no other gods before him than brother Moxie this is the time to recognize the true God and be faithful to him. Any other testimonies? I just want to acknowledge my appreciation to God for his loving care and kindness. Elder Moxie talked about um, waters. And when I think about, you know, God's, you know, when I think about waters and God, I, I think of blessings and blessings, overflowing, abundant blessings. And as I traverse this COVID time, I at never one moment doubted God or doubted his care for us. I know within my heart, deep within my heart, that he knows all things and he's going to carry us through. Um, I never questioned whether God is going to provide for me or my family during this time. And I found, I, I don't know if I should say this, but I found that within this time, when so many salaries are cut or ceased, and both my husband are a part of this thing, but we have had the, God has gifted us with the blessing to give more during this time in short, in such a short period to cover so many um, persons than I did in other times or we did in other times so i am glad that god has uh, allowed us with the restrict the constraints that we have to be a blessing because when we look at it we have not used up enough gas as much gas as we used to because a lot of times we worked from home Yes, so indeed. we were able to use that to bless others. Amen. And, and, and so as I lie here on my bed, I've been sick now for probably four days. Oh, no. And today I was able to stand. I could not stand for about three days. 
And so I am blessing my God Amen. for the strength and for the empowerment to bless others and for Amen. his love for me in having me tomorrow I will be at work. I've not mm -hmm. been at work for the week, but tomorrow God has enabled me to be a blessing again. And as I go to work, I am able to meet so many non-adventist parents and witness to them the love of God. And I've gotten feedback of their impressions. And so I want you to pray for me that wherever God places me, that I will be an effective witness for him. Amen. One last testimony. We have to include Sister Scavello and this family and others in our prayers this evening. A last testimony and we wrap up this session. This has been a rich um, testimony session this week. Um, come on, somebody still has a testimony. I just believe it. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I mean, I, I always have a testimony, but I generally Amen. Like let people go. Uh, uh, and I usually do my testifying one on one when I meet a person I'm witnessing to, and I tell them about the goodness of the Lord. Um, I'd, uh, I'd like to thank any and everybody who's been praying for me and my family as I pray generically for the church and their families. And sometimes when we go over little issues, we call on people by names. But God has been particularly good for me, and I'll just give a, a very vague general thing. but. He has transitioned me from one job to another job at a critical time. As you know, I worked in the hotel industry for Amen. many years. <laughs> and he transitioned me out there <laughs> in 2019, uh, yes. 18 going into 19. And uh, as the COVID-19 hit, man, I saw all those hotels close down. Mm. And I certainly would have been one of them. Now, that doesn't mean that he's not uh, blessing and looking after all the other people whose situation is closed down because God has tests for different people for different times in different ways. But uh, for me, it was crucial at that time because, as you know, I have two kids in university and, and uh, I have a Bahamas Academy student I have to pay for and all these kind of things. So uh, that would have been very traumatic for me. So I'm very grateful for the things he's done for me. But even now at uh, my new job where I am now, uh, we've been sailing along pretty good. But uh, this week in particular has been painful uh, for my company, not financially, but also because uh, a lady and her daughter were shot this week. She works for us. Uh, another lady died from COVID-19 yesterday. Mm -hmm. She worked for us. Yet another lady died today. You know, and we've been rolling along pretty good. And now, you know, it's a reality check. And they're all different ages, different stages in life. Mm -hmm. Could have been anybody. You know, so the families are hurting for many, many different reasons. And... Uh, we have to thank God and praise God for whatever uh, comes our way, challenges or, or even things we, we are blessed by, all from the hand of a God who's carefully crafting any challenge that you face to build your character, to save you. So even when we're perplexed with difficulties, we ought not to be put down. We ought to just turn to God and say, oh, Lord, you know all things. I am in your hands. So I'd like to encourage you as I pray for you to pray for me and my family and this country and the leadership in our church and homes that God will continue to sustain us, that God will continue, that we will continue to hold on to his unchanging hands and be difficult and trying times because it is difficult and trying. So I'd like to thank you all, like I said, for your prayers. I know that there are people out there and I am praying for you too, generically and individually as I know. So that God will see us through. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Pastor, over to you. Thank you. Thank you for those prayers. Thank you for those testimonies. Thank you for the word. 
how is your heart tonight? And um, another passage says that we must lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. We want to encourage you, as we heard in one of the testimonies, that no matter where we are and what <clears throat> circumstances we find ourselves in, we always have an opportunity to be a witness because it's who we are. It's not just what we do, it is who we are. And Lord, let's talk about him. Is the uh, conference's focus uh, now as we get ready to launch out into two weeks of online uh, witnessing the word of God and sharing and pulling together those who have been doing the Let's Talk About Him lessons. Some of you have been doing it online and others have gotten the hard copies. Uh, they are available through Elder Roll. And um, if we need more, we can get more to you. And so we want to encourage each of you uh, to continue to engage your friends and your families in uh, the Let's Talk About Him lessons. And um, even though uh, you might be behind, it doesn't take a long time to catch up. And people can still catch up even now. And even beyond the campaign itself, the lessons I'm sure will, will be available. So we want to thank our personal ministries team, uh, Elder Roll, and all of us who've been uh, engaged in this and the Bible studies that are going on on Friday evenings now and on uh, Sabbath afternoons. So uh, we want to just encourage you to, to continue. Uh, we had a visitor at church this week, and uh, we... Uh, engaged him in this whole process. He too has lost his job from the hotel industry um, or the job has been shut down. And so um, uh, we are here to encourage those who are going through uh, these difficult times and how, which way we can share. The most important thing that we can share is the word of God and his love through us. Um, one of the first uh, B's in the B4 is the, the, the B of being, who we are, and helping people to understand who they are in Christ Jesus. And that's what we're all about. Um, that's our mission. That's our objective. And so we just want to encourage everybody to, 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 to recognize that the campaign is starting soon, beginning on October uh, the 18th, uh, which is about two and a half weeks away. And so uh, we want you to get ready for that and uh, to be prepared for it. And uh, we're looking forward to having a wonderful time as we share the love of God. Uh, get in where you fit in. Talk to people about what you know, what God has done for you. Um, invite them. If they accept doing the lessons, fine. If they don't, uh, we continue to pray for them and to encourage them and just befriending them. And so we are just thankful for this opportunity that's coming up uh, shortly and uh, a number of activities, a prayer meeting, 10 days to, to, to prayer um, is going to be launched uh, in a few days uh, leading up to this. And uh, we, want to, we want everybody to get involved uh, and to be a part of what is happening. So on Sabbath, we will uh, have all the details of these uh, various initiatives. Um, our women's ministry is having a, a, a weekend. Our um, SAWS program uh, is going to be, and all of them dovetailing into let's talk about him. Let's talk about him. And so these are avenues and pathways, entry events to build, building relationships with people and then having them transition to the word of God that we'd like to hear them have them uh, accept uh, before uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so I'm just here to, to re reinforce and endorse all that's been being said every Wednesday evening in our Let's Talk About Him uh, time uh, here uh, at our prayer refreshing time. So God bless you. Thank you for what you have been doing and what you will continue to do. Uh, somebody asked me for Another set of hard copy lessons today on the roll. So I, I directed them to you uh, for another set. Um, and that, that, that should be um, in place 
If they haven't called you yet, they will. So you can listen out for that. So uh, thank you. Um, and remember, all of us can talk about what Jesus has done for us, what he's done for us. He's kept us, he's preserved us, and um, he has uh, caused us to be uh, in good health, uh, those of us who are here tonight, and that we can pray for others who are uh, in need and we get able to serve. So God bless you and thank you. And let's talk about him uh, every day in our actions, in our behavior, and in our verbal expressions. Thank you.